All right, approximating areas with the trapezoidal rule. This is uh, another area approximation method, as I just said. It's very closely related to Riemann sums. However, uh, Riemann sums, if you use the word Riemann, that means specifically to use rectangles. The trapezoidal rule is very similar, uh, except when we divide our region up, we will divide into trapezoids. And the way we do that is uh, looking at this graph right here. If I wanted to find the area from um, here, I will call this point right here A. And we'll call this very last one B. Uh, and we're going to pretend that we can't count these subdivisions. I kind of left uh, that one unlabeled. We're going to pretend there's an infinite number of subdivisions or a whole bunch that you can't count. So uh, when we divide this up, we're going to divide into trapezoids. And to do that, from each of these x coordinates where we are dividing the region, we will go straight up to the curve. And we're going to divide it into a whole bunch of little regions like this. I'm going to pause it while I finish doing that. There we go. Uh, so we divide it up with all of our subdivisions. And then when we uh, close off the region we're going to find the area of, we go straight from one point to the next. Now that one actually ended up looking like a rectangle. But this next one here, we're going to connect straight from this y coordinate to this y coordinate. And then I'll do the same thing here. And then I'm going to connect all of these with little line segments. And what I've done is I've created a whole bunch of trapezoids. And when we approximate the area of this, what I'm going to use as my approximation, I'm going to find the area of each of these trapezoids. That trapezoid right there, this trapezoid right here. And by using trapezoids, you actually get a much more accurate approximation of area because uh, rectangles tend to leave a lot of over or under uh, estimate region messing up the approximation. Uh, now what you do need to remember is these are trapezoids. The problem some people have with this is in your mind when you see a trapezoid or when you think trapezoid, you think the parallel sides are the top and bottom and your trapezoid in your mind looks something like that. These trapezoid, these are trapezoids but in th this case our parallel sides for the trapezoids are left and right and then the two non-parallel sides are the top or the bottom and the top. So for these trapezoids, the bases are the left and the right, and the height of the trapezoid is this distance right here. And we do need to remember the area of a trapezoid. Maybe you've forgotten. Um, the area of a trapezoid is one half the height of the trapezoid times the sum of the bases. So we're going to use that formula. We're going to find the area of each one of these trapezoids. Uh, and you just have to remember that your height is actually the distance between the x's. So for, the, for these problems, the height is your change in x. Whatever that distance is right there is your height. And remember, change in x is uh, whatever your beginning or ending point is minus your beginning point over the number of subdivisions. So b minus a over n is your height. And my writing is absolutely crap right there. Uh, so let's work out trapezoid, trapezoids with this figure here. And uh, it'll end up giving you a nice, cute formula that we get to remember and use as we uh, do trapezoidal approximations. All right, gave myself a little bit of room there. Okay, let's look at this first trapezoid right here. Um, this trapezoid from x0 to x1. If I want to find the area of that trapezoid, it's going to be um, 1 half the height of the trapezoid. But remember, the height is your change in x, so it's 1 half delta x times, and then I need to find the, the bases of the trapezoid, but remember your bases are your, uh, your left and your right. So this is one base, and this length is the other base. So we have to find those lengths, and to get those lengths, um, those lengths are found by the y coordinate at the top of each of those segments from on the left and the right. So to get the y coordinate, you simply plug in x0 to the function. So f of x0 is my first base, and my function's value at x1 is my second base. And so uh, that's how we're going to get the area of that first trapezoid. Then I will move over and I'll do the area of my next trapezoid. So my next trapezoid, the base is, um, or the height is still your change in x, so it's 1 half change in x. And then the bases are your y coordinates at x1 and x2. So that would be f of x1 
plus f of x2. And then we'll continue on with the third one. It's going to be 1 half. I'm going to run out of room. Change in x times your function at, this time my next trapezoid is x2 and x3. So f of x2 plus f of x3. I'm going to have to rewrite that. So uh, I'm going to pause this. I'm going to finish right now all of these trapezoids, and we'll come back and do some magic to it. Hey, there we go. So I went ahead and uh, finished extrapolating out all of those trapezoids. I did kind of leave a gap and just hit plus dot, 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 because the pattern repeats. Um, and then you end with your very last trapezoid with your next to last 10, or x, which is x sub n minus 1, and then x sub n. And this is an area approximation. So what I could say is that the area from, oh, that's a horrible integral sign. Let's try that again. The area, that's still bad, but we're sticking with it, from a to b under f of x is approximately this trapezoidal sum. Now, what I'm going to do now with this trapezoidal sum is a little bit of algebra. If you look at all of these uh, little trapezoids, I can factor out a 1 half and a delta x. So if I pull out the 1 half and the delta x, that's going to leave me with, see I have f of x sub 0 plus f of x sub 1. Um, and then I pulled out that 1 half delta x, leaving me with an f of x sub 1 plus f of x sub 2 plus, and then I have an f of x sub 2, and we'll continue that, and I'm going to pause the recording and I'll finish writing out all of these f of x sub stuffs. There we go. So I factored out the 1 half delta x's and left me with this. And then if you look inside those brackets, the very last thing, last piece of algebra we're going to do. And I'm also going to change, instead of saying 1 half delta x, I'm going to change that to delta x over 2. Same thing. I just kind of like the way that's written better. But if you look on the inside, I have 1 f of x sub 0. But if you look at all the rest, we have 2 x sub 1s, 2 x sub 2s. There would be 2 x sub 3s, but I did the dot 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 thing also known as an ellipses or something like that. I don't know. I don't speak English. Uh, let's see. So uh, that'd be 2 f of x sub 1 plus 2 f of x sub 2 plus 2 f of x sub 3s. And you have 2 of everything in the middle up to that second to last f of x sub whatever. And then we only have 1 of the last one. And that, what I just wrote this is your formula for your trapezoidal approximation. We're going to use this formula when we do area by trapezoids, uh, and it saves you a little bit of time. You don't have to draw the graph and, and start and factor out all those half delta x's. We can jump straight to this thing in the blue box, and that is our trapezoidal rule, and I'm being lazy. Oh, rude. Let's put an L in that. There, a trapezoidal rule. That is the formula we are going to use. So I have two problems that I wanted to do. We now have our formula for the trapezoidal rule. It's delta x over 2, f of x sub 0. You have 2 of everything in the middle, 2 f of x1, x, f of x2, 2 up to the very last one where you only have 1 of that last one. And the reason you have 2 of them is because all of these x's in the middle, x sub 1, that length right there is a base for 2 trapezoids. x sub 2 is a base for the one on the left and the one on the right. But if you get to the far right and the far left trapezoids, x sub 0 is only the base for one trapezoid, so that's why we only have one of them. And x sub n is only the base for one trapezoid, that's why we only have one on the right end. Uh, so let's put this in action for two problems, and we are going to use our calculators on these. Uh, the first one is pro uh, to approximate this area using three subdivisions. Uh, so what we will do is we will call that trapezoids with three subdivisions, and uh, we will call this, our function, e to the negative x squared is f of x, which I will plug into my calculator as y1. And I need to find my delta x, my change in x. Now this one's really easy because we're going from 0 to 3 with three subdivisions. So that'd be 3 minus 0 over 3, which is 1. That's pretty easy. Um, and then what I like to do to organize my trapezoidal sum is I'm simply going to draw the x-axis. I really don't care what's happening on the y-axis. So I'm going to draw my x-axis. I'm going from 0 to 3 with three subdivisions. So that would be 1, 2, 3. And I just want to see that because it helps me when I'm writing out my trapezoidal sum. My first trapezoid is going to go from 0 to 1. So uh, 
let's see, that'll be 1 half delta x, or you're changing x over 2, changing x is 1, so 1 half, 1 over 2, times, then we have 1 of our first x coordinate, which is 0. We have 2 of every x coordinate in the middle, 2 f of x sub 1 plus 2 f of x sub 2, and then um, f of x sub 3, that's the very last one, or f of 3. That should be f of 2, not f of x sub 2. There we go. I kind of blumbered my way through that. Uh, so your delta x is 1, so 1 over 2, f of x sub 0, 2 of the ones in the middle, and then 1 of the last one. And then we will simply throw this in the calculator. Um, do not, in your calculator, please do not do f of 0 and write down that decimal f of 1 and write down that decimal, 2 f of 2 and write down that decimal. I don't want to see the individual pieces. Just throw it all in the calculator and give me one nice answer in the end. And there we go. So I threw it in my calculator and you can see my answer. And notice when I plugged it in, I just plugged it in um, y1 of 0, 2 y1 of 1. I didn't do the individual pieces. That's what I was talking about. Just plug, throw it all in the calculator in one big swoop and you get 0.886, we go to the third decimal. So there's that problem. Uh, we have one more, uh, again, approximating the area. Here we're going from 1 to 4 with 6 subdivisions. So my change in x is going to be 4 minus 1 divided by 6, and 3 over 6 is 1 half. Uh, so uh, I'm going to draw my x-axis. I'm starting at 1, and then I have 6 subdivisions, so 1, 2, three, four, five, six, and we're going up by one half. So my next one's 1.5, my next one's two, 2.5, three, and wait, what in the world? Oh, I'm ending at four, what am I doing? Okay, there. All right, uh, then I can see I'm starting at one, I'm ending at six, everything in the middle is gonna be two f of 1.5, two f of two. Uh, my function is x cubed minus 3x. There's the function under which we are finding our area. So trapezoidal rule with six subdivisions is going to be my delta x is 1 half divided by 2. And then we actually need to write all of this out. That's going to be one of the annoying things about trapezoidal rule. It's f of 1 and then 2, f of 1.5, 2, f of 2. It's going to be 2, f of everything in the middle. And then we'll end with 1, f of 4. There we go. So write all of that out, and then once you have it written, then we throw it all in the calculator in one big swoop, and you'll get your final answer uh, for your trapezoidal approximation. So there is our answer. I threw it all in the calculator. I got 87.188. Go to the third decimal. And uh, on the AP calculus exam, uh, you can also do something called truncating, which means you can write out to the third decimal and just quit writing after that third decimal. So we could just, if you forget how to round, you could just simply write out the first three decimals and ignore your rounding rules regardless of what's after that last one. Um, so either one of those would be acceptable answers on the AP exam, and since it's acceptable on the AP exam, I accept both of them here, although uh, I like the 188 answer. So there we go. That is trapezoidal approximations, um, another close related cousin to Riemann sums, but we're using trapezoids instead of rectangles. There we go. Yay.